Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the President of the National Audit Office, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa at Skhir Palace, who submitted to His Majesty the 19th Annual NAO Report for 2021-2022. His Majesty commended the efforts exerted by NAO President and cadres, noting their distinguished performance and their achievements in protecting public money and verifying the legality and aspects of its expenditure, in light of their keenness to implement the highest levels of integrity, professionalism, and transparency to achieve the interests of the nation and citizens. His Majesty hailed the major role played by NAO in assuming its responsibilities to the fullest, maintaining the independence of its work in a manner that contributes to improving the performance of state ministries and institutions, as well as ensuring the highest levels of productivity, efficiency and optimal use of all resources are reached in order to achieve public interest. Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed attributed NAO's developed performance since its establishment to His Majesty the King's unwavering support and wise directors, noting that he listened to His Majesty's sound directors. He also briefed His Majesty about NAO's future plans and development programs, including the continuous investment in the human element and the expansion of oversight services, especially recent ones, such as investigative auditing, digital transformation, and the effective use of technology. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received members of the Salam family at Al Sakhir Palace. The family extended sincere thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for His Majesty's order to build an events hall for their family occasions. His Majesty welcomed the members and congratulated them on Ahmed bin Salma bin Jabbar Al Salam's success in winning the presidency of the Council of Representatives. His Majesty the King congratulated the Speaker and all members of the Legislative Authority, wishing them every success in serving the nation and the citizens. His Majesty valued highly the efforts being exerted by all Baha'i to serve their nation and enhance its development process. He praised their cohesion and fraternity within the one family of the Bahraini society. The guest extended heartfelt thanks to His Majesty the King, wishing His Majesty abundant health and happiness, as well as further progress and prosperity to Bahrain under His Majesty's leadership. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghibiya Palace. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, on the 26th anniversary of the National Guard's founding. The cabinet highlighted the role played by the National Guard in safeguarding the kingdom and its efficiency in carrying out its duties. The cabinet noted the well organized and widely attended celebrations to celebrate the kingdom's national days. It also thanked the kingdom's citizens and residents who attended and noted their responsibility behavior which contributed to the event's success. The cabinet commended the efforts of the concerned authorities led by the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Information Affairs which contributed to the success of the New Year's Eve events. The cabinet denounced the armed terrorist attack that targeted a security checkpoint in Ismaili, a governor at northeast Egypt. The cabinet expressed its sincere condolences to the government, the Egyptian people and the families of the deceased and which those injured a speedy recovery.
The Cabinet then approved the following, a memorandum by the Minister of Interior regarding the classification of a number of entities and individuals as terrorist entities, a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft system that establishes a procedure for the work of the Committee on Combating Extremism, Combating Terrorism, Financing Terrorism and Money Laundering, and facilitating the exercise of its competencies, a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision on the pro processes for implementing decisions to be included on national terrorist lists and United Nations Security Council resolutions issued under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. A memorandum by the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture regarding the acquisition of real estate for public use to provide the necessary spaces for urban development. The Cabinet then took note of the ministerial report regarding the visit of the Minister of Cabinet Affairs to the UAE. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the advisor to the Board of Directors of Noga Holding, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza at Qadabiya Palace, who presented His Royal Highness with a copy of his book, My Journey for the Country. His Royal Highness expressed pride in Team Bahrain, who have contributed to the kingdom's ongoing development and are inspiring future generations. He also emphasized the importance of their efforts in achieving the kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended Dr. Mirza for writing the book, which documents his his work in the public and private sectors. He noted Dr. Mirza's extensive contributions throughout the various positions he had held. Dr. Mirza expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness for his continued support of Team Bahrain and emphasized his commitment to achieving more success for the kingdom and its people. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, also attended the meeting. The Minister of Labor and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the LMRA, Jamil Ahmedan, chaired the seventh meeting of the fourth session of the Board of Directors of the LMRA. The Minister of Labor stressed the importance of continuing efforts towards developing mechanisms and procedures that contribute to strengthening the labor market environment in accordance with a system that preserves the rights of all parties, guarantees its stability and competitiveness, and responds to the changing market requirements. Ahmedan praised the results of the visit and inspection campaigns carried out by the LMRA in coordination with the relevant government agencies with the aim of dealing strictly with violators to achieve the government's goals and address a regular employment in line with the implementation of awareness campaigns for workers regarding the laws and regulations in force in Bahrain. The Ministry of Housing offered 771 housing units and apartments in Khalifa and Salman towns within the Government Land Development Rights Program in partnership with the private sector for the bidding system in the Government Land Investment Platform. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, said that the submission of bids for the development of lands allocated for residential apartments will end on the 1st of March, while the date for submitting bids for the development of lands allocated for residential units ends on the 5th of March. She stressed the importance of of offering projects on the government land investment platform. She explained that all information related to these projects has been included in the platform. The minister noted that these projects represent the first phase of the government land rights development program. The Ministry of Health announced the transfer of health telephone services provided on the number 444 to the new ministry number, which will be available during official working hours from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. starting today. The ministry stated that the new number will provide callers with a list of previously provided services by responding to inquiries and listening to notes and suggestions. The Ministry of Health noted that those who wish to receive medical advice or inquire about or take COVID-19 vaccinations should go directly to primary health care centers. Bahrain's ambassador to Brazil, Badr Abbas al participated in the official reception ceremony held by the president-elect of Brazil, Lula da Silva, in honor of country leaders and officials participating in the inauguration ceremony of the Brazilian pres president held yesterday in Brasilia, where he took the constitutional oath. The Bahraini ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa to the Brazilian president and His Majesty's congratulations on the occasion and his wishes of success and achieving progress and prosperity for the people of Brazil and further bilateral relations. 
The meteorological directorate at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications stated that the expected weather today in Bahrain will be relatively cold, rainy and cloudy. It noted that northwest wind ranges from 12 to 17 knots, reaching 20 to 25 knots at times during the day, and sea waves reach 1 to 3 feet inshore, 3 to 6 feet offshore. It also warned of strong winds, calling on citizens and residents to take caution to preserve their safety in light of the unstable weather conditions. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh, in cooperation with the Embassy of Bangladesh in the Kingdom of Bahrain, organized Visit Bangladesh 2022 program. More on this report. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh organized the Visit Bangladesh 2022 program, bringing together delegations from various countries to enjoy the history and culture of the country. The delegations paid a visit to the Rohingya camp, Bangladesh is home to the world's largest refugee camp, hosting more than a million Rohingya refugees who fled a brutal crackdown by Myanmar's military in 2017. Actually, the, the thing is that actually we, based on the, that, that they are updated documents they receive, that they are all kind of the assistance and also it helps to move the uh, refugee or POC the, around the camps. And also this help in also the protection intervention, food and non-food distribution, also the medical uh, support, all the facilities uh, have the... Actually, this is one of the inlet process to keep updating the refugees' records and keep updated the refugees' uh, the documents. The camp provides the refugees with necessities, job opportunities, education and medical services. Many humanitarian organizations are working side by side with Bangladesh to ensure all refugees have a place to stay and feel safe. So UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, is leading in the response in the Rohingya refugee camps. In particular in Camp 4, we are in charge from registration to providing services to refugees. So currently we are on a registration site where refugees receive ID cards with which they can then access other services in the camps. My particular role is to make sure that the information about the camps goes outside of Bangladesh and that people know who the refugees are, what the refugees need, so that we can gather fundraising support because these people are almost completely dependent on humanitarian aid. So if they don't get resources from abroad, they don't eat, they don't have a place to sleep, they don't have a place to take a shower. So this is why it's important that we communicate what these people need. The program was a special opportunity for delegations around the world to visit Bangladesh and be educated on its various cultures and history. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef.